Hey everybody, Andy Ryder here with Project Lab. I apologize in advance, but I've got to be kind of a downer here because these things are dangerous in a way that I don't think a lot of people realize. Basically, the issue is that it can be kind of tough to see behind you when you're backing up on a lawnmower. The real danger is with mowers like this one that let you keep the blades going in reverse, which is a really handy feature for being able to mow quickly around awkward spots. If the blades are off, that's bad enough to back over somebody. But if the blades are on and you put it in reverse, then you can severely hurt people. So there's a, an NBC news story that quotes an organization called Fair Warning. A study published in 2017 in the American Journal of Emergency Medicine estimated there were 1,641 backover injuries in the United States from 1990 to 2014, roughly 65 per year. 70% of the victims were under the age of 5. To put a face on this, there's an ABC story talking about a two and a half year old girl who broke her left leg and nearly lost two toes after she was run over by a lawnmower driven by her great grandfather. He was backing up and didn't see her, her mother told ABC News. My thought is, why not throw a backup camera on the lawnmower? I'm sure critics are gonna say, just turn around. The point being, this is another tool to help you know if someone's behind you. These stories talk all the time about how the person mowing the lawn didn't expect anyone to be out in the grass. I could see it happening even if my three-year-old was inside, mowing along the sidewalk, people walking along, you make one wrong move and back up a little bit, and even if you don't mow over them, you could still hurt somebody severely. So we're gonna give this a try. One welcome surprise for this experiment is that you can get backup cameras for pretty cheap. I got this one off of Amazon for 40 bucks. We've got directions, cord, cord, camera, connectors, a screen, and the really important one for my purposes here, a 12 volt adapter. I specifically picked this because my mower has a 12 volt port. So it saves me from having to cut into the wires to get this thing powered up. Before we do any real installing here, let's make sure that everything works. I wasn't sure if I was gonna need the directions, but I think I'm gonna need the directions. We've got this long wire with red and yellow on either end. The yellow is the video signal and the red is the power. And then split off of that, is this 6.6 .6 foot power wire. I've gotta hook that in to the adapter here. This little auto wire stripper is amazing. So I'm just inserting this wire into the hole and then there's a screw on top. And as I screw down, a little piece of metal clamps the wire down. This plugs into the power. This close one plugs into the screen, and this back one plugs into the camera. This front one has three plugs. There's a yellow and a white. The yellow one will always be providing signal, but then if you had a second camera that only turned on if the vehicle was in reverse, then you'd plug that into here. So I should be able to plug this in. Hey, we've got screen action. Cool. So this is the back of the seat view. That works. Something like that. And it's adjustable. Camera's definitely not quite centered. But actually, right about there is pretty good. For the final install, I'd feed the wires underneath the mower, tuck it into the frame so that they're out of the way, but for now I'll just tape them in places where your feet are less likely to catch. We're gonna leave the camera connectors for the last bit to get tucked in there.
Hey, that's pretty solid. Yeah, there we go. Oh yeah, you can see that good. And now we're ready for a test. But then I'll have to wait till tomorrow because it's 11.30 at night. Normally, I would just leave this the way it is and probably revisit it in the winter when I have more time and figure out a way to pretty this up and get rid of the exposed tape everywhere. But because I know there's a lot of you out there who could never live with how messy this looks, I'm going to go a little bit further here and do what I can to hide the wires and more securely attach the monitor and the camera. For step one, I'm gonna remove the backup camera, get all the tape off. I'm just gonna cut the sides of the mounting bracket off because they kinda get in the way and I don't need them for this. I probably could've, could've gotten straighter lines if I had marked them, but we're just gonna ignore that. And then I'm gonna use denatured alcohol to clean off the back of the seat. Something like rubbing alcohol would work just as well. And I'll clean out the back of the camera while I'm at it. I'm thinking I'm gonna stick the camera up higher because that way I can see more behind the bottom of the engine. It's kind of a balance between seeing in the distance and seeing right behind you. If you didn't have this big motor there, you'd be able to see all of this. And then I'll reattach the camera with some 3M VHB tape. This is the same stuff that they use for GoPro mounts. Highly recommended by maker Jimmy DeResta. Because of this convex shape, I'm gonna stick one piece on the high side over here and one piece on the high side over here. And now I'll destroy the rest of my beautiful tape job. So this is another area where if you've got just a regular front engine lawnmower, your life is gonna be easier than mine right now. Because I don't have anything along those lines, I've gotta take off this front cover piece which I don't really want to do, but for science, we're going to do it. Ah, oh, so close. I think I'm going to have to take off both sides. And now it pulls away. Cool. Oh boy, there's a lot of stuff going on in here. Oh, crap. I think I got to pull this yellow thing off. I'll be right back. All right, I got all the bolts out on this yellow piece, and now I can lift this up and I can fit my hand around in there nicely. I'm able to follow the wire for the parking brake and I can see that that runs up through this area underneath the seat, which I cannot feed the wire through by itself. So instead, I'm gonna use a separate piece of wire, feed it through the back, tie it to my electrical wires and then pull it through. Update, the bats are back. Just gotta fly a little bit lower, fella. These bats are pretty good flyers. If they can keep flying around and not hit these nails sticking out of the side of the roof here. Before I button this all back up, let me just show you what I did here and the logic behind it. So at the top, we've got the video monitor hookup and the power cord, which runs back down through itself, but that's the best I could do. And then I taped those in place and left some slack taped in case I ever need to open this back up because I screwed something up here and give myself a little more room, for example, if the steering wheel doesn't adjust right. And then I went down and followed this wire down through 
through this area. You can see after following that wire for a little bit, I went off the other way and taped it to the frame and then piggybacked on this wire. Following this wire is a safe path back to the back of the mower area. Going underneath this bar here, you wouldn't want the wires loose. There's just a lot going on in here. So instead I followed that wire all the way back and just taped my wire to the existing wire. And then I came up through the back and I had to pull the battery so that I could fit my hand back in here, but I was able to feed the wire up through where this safety wire for the seat comes up. And again, I taped it to the conduit and I ran the wire through here and I unscrewed these bolts on the back of the seat and was able to tuck the wire for the camera behind there and then met in the back for the hookup and taped it all in place. So there's actually very little exposed wire for all of that. So I still need some way to extend the reach of the monitor in this little monitor bay up here. So I'm gonna try an electrical gang box cover because this is pretty easy to find if you need one. And I could spray paint this black, but I wonder if I can just cover it with gaffer's tape and get away with that. Looks pretty decent. I don't see any way around having this severe bend on these wires, so I'm gonna wrap them in gaffer's tape to protect them. And before I forget, I'll wrap this clamp connector thing with some electrical tape, just because of the exposed wire parts of the thing. So now I'm gonna take my plate and I already put some VHB tape on the back of it. Okay, I think I can still get it off with the screen in this position right at the end of the platform. And I can get it on. All right, I guess I'm gonna go for it. My fingers still miss it. And the power port fits. This is nicer than last time too because we can still get at the buttons. And does it all still work? Yes! Well, it's two in the morning, so four hours later. Four. Six hours later? Started maybe around 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 5 hours later, and I'm done. It was a little more fun than I thought to actually get everything neat and tidy. It was like a little puzzle figuring out how to get the wire to get back there without doing anything risky. What's that you're saying? You don't have a 12 volt cigarette lighter on your mower? And you don't have a zero turn mower with a steering wheel on it? So this whole tutorial has been useless for you? Don't worry, I've got you covered. Adding a cigarette lighter port is easy. We're gonna do that. And your life is gonna be about a billion percent better having a front engine mower like this one. So we're gonna go through that too. So there's lots of ways to tap into the power on a mower, but one real simple one is just to add your own 12 volt cigarette lighter port. This marine rated one has a cap on the end to keep water out and it includes a fuse so if something goes wrong this fuse will melt and stop working before you get electrocuted or a fire starts. At least that's the idea behind this and by buying something like this with it all in line and built in you don't have to think about what kind of a fuse do I need? What wires and ratings should I have? You can get these for real cheap on Amazon. I'll have a link to this below as well. And now we can just open up the engine bay. And since this kit also includes these ring connectors, we can slip the red into the red connection and the black into the black connection. And now it's hooked up. 
So now all that's left is to secure this in place so that we can easily access this. In theory, we could tape it up somewhere in here, or maybe beside the battery. Another option is if you can find a good place somewhere to drill through to make a hole this size, then you could install it through the front and have access from the front seat. But just be careful because I know, for example, my old mower had a gas tank in this area. So that would be bad to drill into that. And meanwhile, it almost certainly will have some amount of wires. So you really gotta be careful about where you're drilling if you're gonna go that route. Luckily for me, on my father-in-law's mower here, there's a spot for one of these 12 volt ports that it just wasn't installed. So now I can install it. Started back here, I fished my wire down through this hole and it came out under here in this area. And then I pulled the wire back up through, hooked everything up and taped it in place. And then I taped it to the wire conduit again. And then I ran another wire down through here where the existing electrical is. Fished it back up through, taped all that in place. And I actually was able to hide the 12 volt wire over here too. Wrapped everything up, tucked it in place, taped the monitor on, and we're good to go. Except our monitor is bad. This is why I recommend testing everything before installing it in case you have to send it all back. I'd call this thing a no-brainer for me. It was cheap, it was easy enough to install, and it works. Yeah, the intimidation factor can be kinda high because you're dealing with electricity, which is a major red flag for people, but this really is close to a plug-and-play install. If you're too scared to do this, I bet your local lawnmower repair place would be glad to take your money to do it for you instead. No question, this doesn't replace looking behind you when you back up. Always look behind you when you go in reverse. Go slow. Don't let these backup injury horror stories happen to you. But this at the very least is a nice early warning system that someone or something is behind you. And to anyone who says people will think they can use this instead of turning around and looking behind them. Honestly, this camera makes everything look so close. In the monitor, it looks like you're about to hit something, but when you turn around, it, you realize it's, it's still at least a foot or two away. So it's less tempting to rely solely on the backup camera than you might think. I'll have links to everything I used here down below. If you have any questions or thoughts, leave them in the comments on YouTube. I try to respond to everyone who stops by. And if you like this kind of thing, please subscribe. Thanks for watching and stay safe.